What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Joys of Editing. Hope you're excited. We have the Scare of God today, Mr. Spooky. <laughs> I promise, hey, it's not going to scare me too much. I'm going to stay strong for you all, even though he is a little too spooky for me. Um, anyway, yes, we're doing the Scare of God today. Uh, before we jump into this edit, um, I am the program that I'm using using is called GIMP. Uh, there is a download uh, link in the description below if you want to download it. It is free and a good alternative to Photoshop. So if you want to start doing some photo editing, uh, download it and kind of play around with it. Pretty cool. And then also I'm listening to uh, Il Illinois Street Lounge, which is a Soma FM uh, radio station online. So I'll have a link down to the music below if you want to pull that up and kind of put it on in the background. That's what I'm listening to right now. It's really good music for kind of tedious stuff. But yes, we have the Scare of God. Look at him. Looks pretty cool, man. Got the, uh, and this is what I love about doing card art editing is that you get to see the card art like right in front of you. You know, when you see a magic card, it's just about the size of your hand or about half the size of your hand. And it's really hard to get all the details in there. And like first thing that you notice, or at least I noticed, was you can see all the little birds right there. So you can see how big he is. I mean, that's really cool. Then we've got all these little people over here on the different ledges and they're all like little exile ghost style people. And you got the little Nagas over here, the jackals or the minotaurs. See them sitting right there. Though they're up there too. Yeah, man, this is just... And that's one of the things why um, I ended up going with this deck. I did the Crypt of the Scarab God because it reminded me of something like a Dungeons and Dragons like dungeon. You would go fight like, yes, Traveler, go to the Crypt of the Scarab God and defeat him to get the treasure. I mean, I don't know. It just looks so Dungeons and Dragons. I love it. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And there's just one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's like six little ledges of people up there all uh, cheering on the... Uh, Nice little scare of God, but uh, yeah, let's go get into the editing. But yeah, that's one of my favorite things to do is just kind of take in the card art and just kind of look at the detail and uh, kind of go from the Oh, and one of the things I'm most excited about editing is going to be these nice little bones right here. But uh, first things first, let's go and oh, hit Control Z. There we go. Let's go ahead and make a uh, clear overlay. We're going to make a new layer right now. Go over to make sure hi transparency is highlighted. Click OK. We're going to drag it down right here, and then we're going to go ahead and merge this down. There we go. That way there's a transparent layer on the bottom. So we pull the eraser tool up. Let's make this a little bit bigger, and you can see where it's transparent. Uh, in my last video, somebody said, hey, do a new layer with uh, some sort of color on there, and then you can... Uh, you can kind of make sure you didn't miss anything. So we're going to go and go ahead and do that. Let's pull this one up. We're going to click the little eye tool right here to make the Scarab God just be invisible for right now. And let's go to the fill bucket and let's just pick out a color. We'll just go ahead and go for uh, that'll be a nice little color. We'll go for this blue. That'll work. Just kind of fill in this area. And then we're going to turn this back on. So now whenever we go to card edit, and then make sure that you do have this layer highlighted because if you start highlighting right here, it's not going to do anything. So we're going to click back on the original layer, draw it back through there. There we go. So you can kind of see where if we did something like that, like, oh, we did miss a spot, we'll go back in and clean it up like that. So hit Control-Z, that way we can do a clean edit. But, um, but yeah, it should be a pretty easy edit. You know, we're going to be able to work our way around right here. And then there's just a lot of clear defined areas. So usually if you're editing a card art, it has a lot of stuff going on. It's a little hard to edit. This should be a nice little edit. And we're going to do the thumbnail today, which I'm really excited about. So let's go ahead and bump the brush up a little bit. And then, yeah, that sounds like a good size. So let's just gonna, we're going to start working at the edge. And just hold the mouse button down and slowly work it up. Just like that. Yep. So make sure you get everything. And then there, so, some pe multiple people mentioned the uh, fuzzy selection tool, the region tool. Um, you know, see how it kind of highlights like that. It's just a little hard to get a clean edit with that. And I, I just found that uh, even if you um, actually let's hit click none on that one. Um, on certain images, you can use the fuzzy region tool, and it'll really help you kind of uh, isolate certain areas. But when you have just a lot of stuff going on, uh, just, you know, at the end of the day, it's a little bit easier to kind of um, just get the eraser in there and just make sure you really kind of clean it up. That blue looks really good on the Scarab God. I'm, I'm almost kind of bummed we have to edit out all these little dudes over here. They're pretty cool looking, man. But yeah, as far as the Scarab God goes, um, Scarab God does work really well as a zombie commander, but I ended up going with a black-blue reanimator kind of style deck on here, which was um, pretty fun. I love reanimator. Uh, I have one reanimator deck that's like dedicated to reanimator, and that's Mimeoplasm. But uh, yeah, Mimeoplasm, he's fun. But the thing about Mimeoplasm is it's so like, especially in one versus one commander, it just, um, and actually... I think we've done about all we can do. We don't want to edit out any of that image right there. And I'll finish that mimeo mimeoplasm thought in here in a second. And during my last video, somebody said beat the bullets out of the brush. So I'm, I'm going to have to start using it now. I love it. So let's go and beat the bullets out of this brush. We're going to make this down just a little bit. So right now we're at 219 on the size. Let's go and bump it down to about 100. That, yeah, that'll work right there. Because the, you just kind of want to get an area that you can allow to get right close to the edge. And then you can come back in with a smaller brush and kind of go from there. So actually, start up here. And work our way around the little end. There we go. Beautiful. 
and just slowly. As you can see um, where my mouse pointer is, you can see the outer ring of that uh, brush circle. So if you just make sure you maintain the outer part of that brush circle, and you just want to keep that crisp line. You don't want to go into the art uh, because we're going to come in later and kind of clean it up, but it'll allow you to make sure that if you do switch to a little bit of a smaller brush, you're not going to edit out any of the card art and make it kind of fuzzy looking, and then um, kind of just do a little bit of a cleaner edit. The cool thing about doing uh, leaving a like, small, like almost like a patina line on it, is that if there's a really bright background, um, you can kind of as long as you maintain that border all the way around the image, it'll still end up looking good. So that's the main thing you want to do with it. You can either do a clean edit, clean edit all the way down to the image, or you can simply just leave like a tiny little patina on there, and then uh, it'll still look good. Kind of having that nice little pop on there. But yeah, as far as Mimeoplasm goes, um, I love Mimeoplasm, but in one versus one commander, it's just a little little busted sometimes, and you end up with a really big commander, and usually you get some kind of quick scoops on that, and that, that's never fun. I always like giving a good video for you, and um, so I'm really excited about the Scarab God, man. It it's, uh, kind of supports any sort of open reanimator, and uh, it also supports the zombies too. It's kind of, ooh, oh, beautiful. Just kind of bump that little spot right there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's go and bring this down right here. And we're just going to keep maintaining that edge right there. And did we get it? Let's hit just to be safe. We'll hit Control Z just to make sure we didn't hit any of that uh, scythe over there. And then we're getting really. I'm really excited about editing out the little in between the arms. It's going to be some nice little fun little edits right there. It's going to pop too. I was really worried about uh, doing this card edit, and uh, once you kind of take away the background him looking kind of goofy <laughs> with his arms like that, but no, he still looks pretty cool. So, and actually, it's kind of going to the inside. I think we've kind of taken care, taken care of uh, most of the outside part. Kind of just brush up a few little areas. We should be good on that. Oh, there we go. And then let's go ahead and just start working. Usually, if you're going to do something like in the middle like this, where it's going to have, you don't want to buff anything out, just make little circles, and then we'll come back in with the smaller brush. You don't want to push it too hard. Like right now, like, yeah, we could... Yeah, we'll come back in later with a smaller brush. And right here, too. Yeah, we don't want to nick any of those little antenna right there. And in fact, let's go and uh, let's beat the bolus out of the brush, knock this bad boy down. Let's go to about 60. See, yeah, that'll work. We can kind of clean up, and then we'll make the brush a little bit smaller. But one of my favorite things about this... Oh, uh-oh. Look at that. There we go. Right in there. <laughs> we made it. Didn't nick anything. Uh, but one of my favorite things about this art right here is just like, you know, he has the body of like a humanoid. But then he just kind of got this, like, scarab head. Th I don't know. It's just, it's you know, because if you think about it, how are you going to make a scarab god, like an actual god type person? So it uh, looks like they did a good job, but it still looks a little, it looks like he's wearing a mask almost. Like he's an alien, but I don't know. <laughs> I like it. Goofy looking dude. And let's go ahead and just bring it right in between this intent. Oh, there we go. And then we're just not going to push it on that. Just want to take it slow and steady. Make sure that we can, uh, I think we can make that. Let's, let's give it a shot. Nah, that, that doesn't look too good. Hit Control Z on that one. We'll have to bump it down just a little bit. You know, if you can make it through a little gap like that, go for it. But, uh, no, nope. once again. All right, we'll come back in later on that one. And then let's kind of just zap this area right here. But, yeah, and then we're also going to be doing a thumbnail today, which is really cool. So I'll be showing you how to, how we do the thumbnail. I would have done the Locust God thumbnail during the last video. But, um, to be honest, like, I changed that thumbnail all the way up until, like, 11 o'clock on Thursday night, uh, just because, like, I originally had black font on it, where the neon was, and the neon just really made that image, at least to me, and so, um, I finally figured out how to do, like, neon style, um, like, kind of font in GIMP, and then I went through and kind of changed it all, so, otherwise, I I'm going to do it like this in the future, to where we just kind of, uh, where I'll do the card edit, and then also do kind of a little thumbnail for you, you can kind of see what's going on. But yeah, man. Oh, and then also, 100%. Shout out to Bob Ross. This is all all inspired by Bob Ross, man. I love Bob Ross. It's, it's, um, I didn't watch him a lot growing up as a kid. Um, I didn't actually start really getting into Bob Ross until he had a Twitch marathon. He had a marathon on Twitch to celebrate his birthday. It was like a week-long marathon, and it was just 24-7 Bob Ross. And man, that was a lot of fun. I loved it. Uh, like, I'd never watched Bob Ross before. Like, I watched it at my grandma's house when I was little. But uh, we had cable growing up, and my grandma didn't. And so we'd watch Bob Ross every once in a while. But when I was little, and it was just kind of like, eh, this isn't Nickelodeon. I'm not going to watch it. But as I've gotten older, oh, yeah, man. I love Bob Ross. I'm, I wish I would have been watching him for a long, you know, ever since I was a little kid. But we just didn't watch a lot of PBS growing up. We, we were a big Nickelodeon, big Nickelodeon family, so... Rugrats, uh, Ren and Stimpy. Man, to this day, Ren and Stimpy. 
<laughs> that was my favorite cartoon growing up, and I watched it on Netflix the other day, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> This show's brutal, man. I don't know if I don't have kids, but uh, when I do have kids, I don't know if I'm gonna let them watch Ren and Stimpy. And the funny thing about it is, my dad, he'd be like, he wasn't a huge Ren and Stimpy fan. Like, he just knew that we liked it. So it'd come across, it'd come on at like Nick at night, uh, like on Saturday nights, and he'd be like, hey, hey, hey Ren and Stimpy's on, and we all like run and get in front of the TV. Me and my brother and my sister, and uh, well, not my sister, she didn't watch it, but me and my brother did. And uh, I just laugh now thinking about my dad being like, hey. Let's make sure, hey, Ren and Stimpy is on. Y'all need, to, like, he would pull us away from whatever we're doing to go watch it. So, that'll, actually, let's hit Control-Z on that one. I didn't want to nick that antenna right there. We'll come back in a second. And uh, can we get through here? Can we get through this gap? Oh, yeah, we made it. Beautiful. Always feels good kind of getting through little gaps like that where you don't think you're going to be able to make it. And let's, we'll still just kind of, we'll come back in later on that one. We'll just buff out a little bit of it. Ooh, can we fit right there? Yeah, just kind of do a little circle pattern. And then anything else, whip right there, come around that elbow. But yeah, I watched a lot of Ren and Stimpy growing up. That was that was a lot of fun. Big Nickelodeon family. And I uh, watched a lot of Rugrats. Mm, a lot of Rugrats, man. That was a good show. And then what else cartoon? Oh, I love Samurai Jack. Samurai Jack's a great cartoon show. Uh, that's a cartoon that I watch a lot into high school. And I just, I don't know, I always appreciated Samurai Jack. I just really enjoyed it. And I wasn't a huge... Uh, I'm I'm pretty I'm, I'm a he pretty big introvert. I don't, I don't like... I mean, I go out, but... Um, probably why I play so much magic, but uh, I'm pretty introverted. I like, uh, like my wife was gone this past weekend, and I just, uh, I think I left the house to go grocery shopping, which was, it was nice to talk to humans, but other than that, man, I spent, uh, all day Saturday and all day Sunday knocking out some, uh, Commander games for you. Well, for me, too, because I enjoy playing Commander, but, uh, at least it gives me an excuse to do my, to, to keep playing magic. I think that's kind of why I started my channel, is because, um, Let's see. Yeah, we can get in there. Uh, one of the reasons I did start my channel is because I was just playing an ungodly amount of Magic. Well, not an ungodly amount, but I mean, I was playing a lot of Magic. And it's not like I was really going to tournaments. I was just... I love the game. When I get into something, I think... Did we nick that corner? Yeah, there we go. We'll clear it up right there. And then, can we go through here? I don't know. Let's see. Alright, we're, we're control z way. Let's see. Uh... That's a little questionable. All right, we'll make it a little bit smaller and kind of get in there and clean it up. Let's kind of back out a little bit. So you can see where we have the uh, the background to where it would be a little bit hard to miss some of those areas. But you can see right now that everything's pretty much cleaned up. Uh, we're going to go in through here and do this. Let's go and beat the bowls out of this brush. Let's go down to about 20. Usually what you're going to do if you're doing card editing is knock it down to about half size. And just see how the image... Yeah, that looks good. That'll be good. We're not going to be able to do the bones right there. But it's going to allow us to kind of get in here. And let's just start at this point and slowly work it up till we get that clean edge. There we go. That's exactly what you want to go for. You need to get that clean edge, and it really gives it that uh, that detailed look. That way, when you apply it to a background, it'll have that little crisp look to it. And it always looks real fresh. And in fact, right there, let's kind of smooth that out. Actually, Control-Z kind of shaved off too much right there. And one thing that I found that you can do is just slowly bring your mouse pointer down like a little brush stroke. And that'll allow you to kind of just maintain like some sort of kind of civil line. Like we got a little bicep or whatever that is right there. I don't know if a scarab person works out, but he looks a little ripped for a, a bug person. You know, maybe you're bringing back the undead a lot. And uh, I imagine you have to be in some sort of shape for that. But, um, what was I talking about? Oh, my channel. But yeah, so I almost it's almost like I started my channel just to give me an excuse to uh, maintain the amount of magic that I was playing. <laughs> I, think, I think that's what he, that breaks it down. So, And it's also, like, uh, another thing that I really get into is I comment to everybody. I love commenting when people comment. You know, obviously, I make a, if I make a mistake, uh, people comment. But when people just hop in and say, hey, what's happening and stuff, like, I always enjoy that because um, I don't have a lot of Magic friends. And I, I don't mean that in a sad way. I just mean that I've just I've only played Magic online. That's I've I, There's a few card stores that I go to in the local area sometimes. And if Star City Game comes to my area, I'll get in there and I'll, uh, oh, look at that. Beautiful. Right around that antenna. Ooh, did we shave that knuckle off? Oh, dang. And see, that's a prime example of why every once in a while it's good just to kind of let go. If you know you've got a good area, let go, and then you can um, not redo the entire area that you just did just because you nicked the last part right there. Okay. That looks good. Can I clean that? Okay, now we're getting somewhere. But yeah, so... um. Yeah, so I started playing Magic. I just started playing online. I mean, I bought the cards when I was in, like, fourth grade and started buying them during Mirage just because I really enjoyed the card. It was really good, and um, 
I don't know, they were just cool looking, it was really popular around then. I think that was when it was kind of in that 90s craze of just like, hey, what's the new Beanie Baby, what's this, and is collectible this and that, and, and so I was just kind of like, well, you know, well, those cards look cool. You know, it's kind of cool to grab something that looks kind of, uh, I'm trying to think how to say it, like something that's kind of, like, I remember when I bought the cards, my mom was like, uh, are you sure those are okay? Kind of like... Not that she was overly religious, but she was just making sure that we weren't... I wasn't summoning, like, a, a demon in my room. <laughs> I was like, Mom, they're okay. It's just some cars. She's like, okay. You know, if they're bad, just let me know. You don't need to You don't need to be buying them if they're bad. I'm like, Mom, they're they're good. You trust me, right? She's like, I do. So I'm very much thankful for that. But, yeah. So I started buying cars during Mirage, and then I bought cards all the way, all the way up until about uh, high school. And then I just stopped. Just stopped, and then, man, I didn't think about magic at all in uh, college or anything like that until uh, I, this one weekend my wife had to work or something and uh, I was going to play Xbox like Grand Theft Auto or something and um, oh look at that edit okay let's kind of make sure we yeah we'll need to clean that up just a little bit because I think that what makes this uh, this whole scythe look so good is that it um, needs to be look not look like it's been banged against a bunch of stuff, like the Scarab God's been banging it against the wall. So what we'll kind of do is get in here, and it's a little hard to go for that, but once we get it on the image, it won't look so bad, but when you just got little waves like that, it looks a little goofy. And we'll just kind of get in there and kind of boop that right there. Oh yeah, it looks good. And then we can tighten this up just a little bit. There we go. Looks good. And then having this background, hey, whoever said that, thank you. I forgot to look at your screen name, but thank you for that. But it really does make a difference when you're doing little card edits like this. And uh, But yeah, so as far as Magic Online, yeah, I got into Magic Online, and um, there's just one weekend where I was like, I wonder if Magic's still around. And I was just told myself, like, hey, you never learned how to play Magic. So I said, okay, let's do it. So I went to Google, typed in Magic the Gathering Online, and I found the download client, and uh, downloaded it, and hopped in the free trial room. Like, I, I remembered, like, the mana bases. I think that was the most confusing thing, was that I didn't understand... The, the sequencing. I'm very much a visual person, um, and that's kind of why I picked up Magic so quick, is because I did play it online, because I could see everything before me, and it made a lot of sense to me. And so, when I played online, actually, excuse me, I'm going to take a drink of tea real quick. So when I played online, um, it just the stack's laid out before you, everything makes sense, it doesn't let you make a mistake, so... Magic Online almost teaches you how to be a refined Magic player because you know all the steps, you know the different things when you can do stuff, and um, let's kind of just back out just a little bit. So we've got the inside part pretty clean. Maybe we can buff that little area right there. No, oh, that'll be cutting it too close. Yeah, we'll hit Control Z on that. We'll get in with a smaller brush. So I think the inside part looks pretty good. Actually, let's see if we can't get in this wrist part right there. Yeah, there we go. Just kind of boof. There we go. You just want to kind of just slowly just kind of push it into the corner. Just kind of, you want to make sure it's defined. So you can see their hands defined. So I think this is good other than the little antenna parts right there. We'll come back in and kind of clean that up. But let's go ahead and start at the uh, the edge of the brush and kind of just work our way around. So on this one right here, we're going to come around the corner and just kind of bring your brush around. That way you just want to maintain that curve. Oh, there we go. Looking good. Let's go ahead and bring it in right there. And just slowly work it down. And you know, if you end up shaving off some of the image when you're doing like a quick little line like that. Oh. All right, guys, you ready? Are you sitting in your chair? If you're not sitting in your chair, I'll give you enough time to get in your chair. Okay, now that you're in your chair. All right, I love doing knuckles. So just follow, you just kind of come in there and bounce and then bounce. <laughs> I don't know, it just feels good. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Just kind of clean up the top part of the knuckle. Okay. Looking good. Yeah, that looks good. We'll come back in with a little bit of brush and kind of, actually, I don't like that last little spot. Yeah. All right, so we're just going to keep doing that. I just want to kind of keep that. And on this one, I think we'll come across this way. And just see if we can't maintain that uh, that clear edge. And you kind of see there's a little bit up top. Okay, there we kind of cleaned it up. Let's take away just a little bit of that black edge right there. All right, looking good. But yeah, so I started playing Magic Online. That really taught me how to play the game. And I was really happy I did. And then I just got into it, man. When I get into something, I'm like, get into it. Like, um, yeah, it was just, uh, it was almost just kind of like, man, where you been all my life? It's just because I tried to play guitar. And I remember uh, one time my dad told me, like, when uh, once I graduated, and he's like, you don't have any hobbies. I was like, well, you know, I don't. You know, maybe I go hiking and stuff like that. And then he's like, you got to have a hobby. It kind of fills the time. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, I guess gaming is my hobby, technically. And so uh, I was okay with being Xbox being my hobby. And then that weekend I learned Magic. I was like, okay, I'm digging this. It was funny because, like, the, the Magic Online account was, like, $10. And I was like, yeah, man, because they had a free trial. And I played all the little free trial decks, and uh, that was really good. I'm glad they did that. And um, 
Oh, yeah, I can ride around the corner. Yep. Ooh. Looks good. Uh, but, yeah, so after that, I played the free trials, and then that Monday, I, like, thought about it all day at work. I was like, man, do I need to spend $10 on this? What if you don't like it? What if you don't like magic? You just wasted $10. And I remember finally saying, like, hey, man, it's just $10. If you don't like it, you don't like it. And here we are. I've got a channel. I never would have thought that. Every once in a while, I'll stop for a second and be like, hey, <laughs> like, dude, you got a magic channel. <laughs> you went from, like, not knowing anything about magic to having a magic channel. So, if you want to produce magic content, get out there, man. Do it. Have some fun. I'm showing you how to make some good-looking thumbnails. That really does matter as far as YouTube goes. So, magic should be enjoyed by a lot of people. And it's a really fun game, and make it fun. You know, if you do want to start making some sort of magic content, don't worry. Like, I, I'll be on Twitter sometimes, and people ask, like, different people, like, oh, yeah, look at that line. Looks good. But, yeah, different people be like, well, different people already do this. Should I worry about stepping on toes? Like, nah, man, just you do you. Have fun. Part of the reason I love my channel, doing my channel stuff, is because I love playing these commander decks. And I love, like, making it fun for y'all to watch. And that's interacting with you. Oh, that's what it was. That's going to finish that statement. Um, kind of brought me back to it. Um, but, yeah, it's, I get to interact with you on a daily basis. So, um, I know where I was going now. That makes sense. Let's kind of clean that up. Um, but, yeah, so, like, since I only played Magic Online, I, had, I developed no Magic friends. I didn't belong to a playgroup. Like, the only playgroup I belonged to was a card store that was, like, ten minutes from my house. And after I'd been going there for about six months, it closed down. And, like, I knew the guys. I knew all the people in there. But we weren't, like, I wasn't, like, Facebook friends with them. So we didn't stay in contact. But I wish I did, man. That, that was a cool little group of people. Because that card store, it was like a, um... That looks okay. Doesn't look too bad. Yeah, and then also when I'm doing this scroll like this, I'm doing the mouse wheel up and down, and I'm holding the control key. That's going to allow you to kind of zoom in and out like that. So we've got little baby, tiny scare of God. He doesn't even know a word yet. And zoom all the way in. Then we've got uh, he's he knows everything. <laughs> but yeah, just hold the the control the control key is your friend. But yeah, so we had a small little play group in that card store. It was very much like a, a Cheers bar or something like that. You know, we had a teacher that would come for Friday night Friday night magic. Uh, we would have the uh, just kind of just redo that area. We just had a whole just walk of life that would go to this card store and it'd be the same like 10 to 12 people. So it was really cool. And I've been to some big card stores and it's always nice to have a big card store. But there's something about that family feeling. If, if you go to a card store, that, and you know what I'm talking about at a card store where it's just like the small rectangular store at the end of a shopping strip that's just like nobody else would. I mean, it's not full for retail, but it's just enough to like support like a 10 person Friday Night Magic, and then they have board games and comics along the wall. So you know what I'm talking about. It's not like one of the big ones. And that's what the card shop was. And it was really cool. And we were almost like a little family. And I, I would like religiously went to every Friday Night Magic because it was like, okay, like I get why people like Magic now because I've been playing Magic online for like six months by myself, and I get to play with people and laugh with people. Like this is great. I love it. So I started playing with them, and then like I missed one Friday, and I was kind of bummed about it. Uh, you know, I didn't really want to miss it because I liked going up there. And then uh, I came in that next Friday, and uh, he was like, "Hey, Jolt." I mean, he didn't call me Jolt, but <laughs> you know. And so he's like, "Hey, Jolt," and I'm like, "What's up, man?" He's like, "Oh, you weren't here last week. The, the store's closing." And I was like, "Oh, okay." So then the store closed. Now, it's, here's the important part. This is kind of where I got into Commander. So when that store closed, um, the standard deck I liked playing rotated, and I thought that was kind of BS. I, I didn't understand rotation at the time. And uh, can we get in there? Yeah, we got that. Okay, we'll come back in with the smaller brush and get that little s spot right there. But yeah, so I, I didn't understand standard rotation. I just knew that all of a sudden I knew that Doomblade wasn't legal, and that made me real mad. <laughs> I remember being real mad that Doomblade <laughs> was not standard legal anymore. And so I was like, well, that's BS. I was really having fun building this deck. And so um, it was after that card store closed. So I stopped playing standard. I went back to playing Magic Online. We can get in there right here. And that's what got me into Commander. Because I was like, well, there's got. I want to play something where my deck's not going to rotate out. And I don't want to play Tournament Magic. I just want to have fun playing Magic. So I got into Commander. And, uh, hey, well, here we are now. i got a channel, and I'm doing card art, and I'm talking. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> it's just kind of fun to kind of sit back and be like, oh, cool, man. But, yeah, so that was a big part of why, like, when I did my channel, and I get to interact with a bunch of you cool people on a daily basis as far as the comments go. And, hey, if you're watching this video and you don't comment a lot, hop in the comments sometimes. Just say hello or anything, anything you want to do. And then I always enjoy that because uh, it's kind of like you're my magic friends. And um, since I don't belong to a play group, and it's not that I just I can't make friends. I just I play a lot of Magic online. So, a lot of my Magic friends or my play group is uh, 
derived from people commenting. So I have a, about a group of, um, you know who you are, I've got a group of about five to ten people who comment on a regular basis, and I always enjoy interactions like that. And especially when I make a mistake, it's always just kind of like, hey, buddy, come on, man, you know better than that. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. But yeah, so if you if you never commented, just hop in there. Just say, because um, like, when I make a mistake, that stinks. I don't like making mistakes. And yeah, we're going to go and buff the, oh yeah, get that little nook and cranny right there. Looks good. But yeah, when I make mistakes, you know, I don't like making mistakes. But um, if I do something cool, hop in the comments and be like, dude, nice Rise of the Dark Realms. I don't know, whatever. It's always fun, and I always it's a good way for me to... And it's, I'm not fishing for compliments. I don't need you to be like, wow, Jolt, that was a really good demonic tutor. You searched up an ancient tomb. Good job, buddy. <laughs> I'm not asking for that. I just like, it gives me something. The, the, excuse me. The main reason I bring that up is because it's a way for me to interact with you in not in a way that, hey, you made a mistake. That's where I'm coming from. You know, I, I'm not fishing for compliments. I don't need compliments to... Um, to be happy about my channel, I get, you know, I'm, I'm happy because I get to interact with all of you. It's just kind of one of those, like, it's fun interacting on something fun that happens in Magic because, you know, it's easy to comment on a gameplay mistake. It's real easy to do that. Uh, but if something cool happens, hey, you know, it's just as valid to comment on a, uh, on a mistake as it is to say, hey, wow, that was an awesome blank. That was really cool. I enjoyed this. Because there's some times where I don't realize something's cool, maybe. You know, when you have big plays like that, you obviously realize, like, uh, that was a cool magic move that you just made. Pat yourself on the back. But um, let's see if we're good on this side. All right, so we're starting down right here. Came across. We'll come back in there with a different brush. We need to do this little area right here. We're saving these little things right here for the last. Yeah, we can come around the edge right here. Make sure this is clean. But yeah, it's a different way for us to, because there's different parts you can take from a game. And that's another cool thing about me doing the channels that I've learned is that there's different types of viewers. Like... I'll make a mistake, and to most people, they won't say anything. But there's certain people that watch a Magic game and enjoy the technical aspect to the game. So that was something that I had to learn as my channel has been... You know, I've been doing my channel really only about a year and a month now. So it's been a really big learning curve for me, because one of the things I really, do, I really enjoy is giving you good commentary. Because Magic is a very slow game. And it, that slow game is really brought out if you have somebody who's not giving good commentary. And that's another thing. If you want to make your own videos, work on your commentary. And, you know, I've been... I'll make a lot of mistakes because I am focused on commentary because that is a crucial part to how I want to do my channel, of how I want to present my videos because I want to make sure that, you know... Like, when I make a mistake, like, that's the path we're taking. Like, I'm saying, hey, this is the decision line. We're going to go. We're going to go for it. And it may end up being the wrong one. But at least I sat there. You as the viewer... You almost, you know, if you're doing commentary magic, you almost want to view it as a way of, like, you are driving the ship and people are riding along with you. You know, if you miss the turn, people from the back can say, hey, you missed the turn. But, you know, don't just drive through the media and be like, oh, <laughs> we missed the turn. You know, have a game plan. Have a road trip. You know, if this is what we're going to do. We're going to do for it. And then if it ends up being a mistake, it ends up being a mistake. And then, um, to be honest, when you make it, oh, man, this, I'm just not happy with this bottom part right here. I just want to buff it out to where it's kind of straight. And it probably won't look so bad once we take the blue background off. Just make it a little bit cleaner right there. But yeah, so if you're going to do your own magic stuff, make sure you work on your commentary because um, part of the reason, another reason why I did start my channel is because I would watch, um, you know, some of the major YouTube channels. They would do put out gameplay videos, you know, the Flavor of the Week Pro. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's just whoever just won something recently, they'd have them do a deck tech series. And I would watch them play a deck that I really wanted to, I was really excited about. And then all the commentary would be like, um,. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and go uh, Thought Seize on turn one. Um, I guess we can take... Yeah, we'll just take their timer go if. And, like, if you watch my videos, I never give you more than, like, a two-second pause unless I'm taking a drink of water. And think about it. You know, like, I like to talk the entire time because it feels that silence. That way you're not focusing in on that silence and, like, focusing on, like, dang, this guy stinks at commentary. I remember thinking that numerous times when I watched these videos. I'd be like, man, come on, get your game on, dude. And it's a lot like baseball. You know, if you're a sports fan, uh, football is a very exciting sport. So you don't need a good commentator for football. I mean, it helps if you do, but at the end of the day, you don't need it because the, the game itself is exciting to watch. Uh, Magic is not like that. Magic is a very slow game. Let's go beat the balls out of this brush a little bit, get some of those clean areas. Let's go down to about 13. Yeah, that'll be good. I mean, kind of clean up these little antenna area. Uh, but yeah, Magic is a lot like, it is a very, you know, slow-paced game, and you have to know exactly what's going on, and at the end of the day, somebody's not going to come across a Magic stream and be like, oh, wow, 
I want to watch that. That looks like a table, like a tabletop simulator. <laughs> Can't wait. It's so exciting. And um, so, yeah, so when you're doing commentary, you know, it is a slow game. So the people who are watching a Magic video, obviously they care about it. They're going to take the time out of their day to watch a Magic video. You're going to make sure that you're going to deliver a nice little commentary uh, piece to them. Make sure you kind of explain, like, hey, we're going to be doing this. This is our game plan. And then hopefully we can get into this line of play. And then if it does, then we'll win. If not, then, hey, it happens. But, yeah, so when you give commentary and it's just like, uh... When you give that sense of um, indecisiveness, that's what it is. A sense of indecisiveness, it's hard for the viewer to um, really get into the game that way. Unless they're just kind of skipping through the video. Because, you know, as a viewer, as a magic viewer, I do this too, you put yourself in their position. So if you're giving commentary of, this is what I'm doing because of this, then, you know, they're, they're going to be a little bit more forgiving as far as you making a mistake. Because you, you're explaining your lines of action. If you're up there and you're just kind of doing stuff like you don't know what you're doing, they're going to be like, OMG... Why would you do that? You made a horrible mistake. And so, yeah. So make sure you give uh, good commentary if you want to branch into it. Have some fun. And if you're going to make magic content, do videos that make you happy. That's what you need to do. You need to make videos that will make you happy, a little quality of life, and uh, do whatever you want to do, man. Like Commander. Commander is a very flavorful format of magic. That's why I have so much fun doing stuff like this. I like, you know, anybody could just do the scare of God and be like, hey, Yo, here's the Scare of God, here's five gameplay videos. Here we are doing a uh, card edit of it, and we're doing it like the Crypt. <laughs> the Crypt of the Scare of God, I don't know. It's just that little extra added value, which makes it seem a little bit more special. And Commander allows you to do that, which makes me really enjoy the stuff that I do on my channel. Let's go ahead and just come around this corner. We're going to boop over this little... Oh, yeah, there we go. Looking good. Still want to make sure that ring is right there, and then we can actually just kind of thin this out just a little bit. Looking good. You're thinking we kind of boop right there, boop right there. Give that, uh, give that little whatever. Uh, let's hit Control Z. I kind of like it a little bit bigger like that. And let's go around this corner right here. Okay. Come in here. Just kind of wipe right there. But yeah, you know, if you ever want to start making your own magic videos, go for it. It's a lot of fun. It's a learning process. Um, I've been doing it for about a year and a month now. And um, you grow a lot as a magic player if you're going to do that. Um, man, this looks really good. Let me clean and crisp. Let's go up here to the handle real quick and kind of just kind of just straighten that out. Let's buff that little corner out and bring it up. Make sure we just give that nice little defined line and then work it in there. Oh yeah, it looks good. Okay. Could kind of... Uh, no, nah, that's okay. And then anything else we need to do. We're saving the arms for last. That's going to be my favorite part. Let's go ahead. We need to clean up this... Um, oh, we need to clean up down here just a little bit. Kind of buff that out right there. And then clean up along the side right here. The main thing, like I said, when you're doing these card edits, if you're doing that at home or if you're just sitting there enjoying it, whatever you want to do, but if you are going to start editing card art, uh, just make sure you just have clean, crisp lines. That's, that's what's going to matter. It's going to make it look good. It's going to make it really pop. You know, if you just have, like, like little stuff like that really kills it because it doesn't feel like it's just its own image by itself. So, and that does matter. So, let's go in here and see if we can't... Uh, is there any other bigger areas? We can get in here just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Get those little arms cleaned out. And yeah, we're getting uh, Mr. Scare of God already for his nice little reanimator target. Oh, looking good right there. We'll go ahead and bring it in, and then we'll come back in with a tinier brush. We'll beat the bolts out of it. And just make sure we can really get that nice little uh, open section right there. Now, as far as the thumbnail for this goes, um, this is one of those card arts that it was one of those to where we almost could have used that image. And I don't like using the stock image. I always like trying to do a little bit of a clean edit if we can. And um, so if we can't uh, kind of get this little tip going right there. We'll come back in with a smaller brush to kind of make sure we give that defined area. And then we'll come back in right there. Let's go ahead and start over with this arm right here. But yeah, we almost literally could have just used the straight card out on this one because it was a really pretty image and it was the focal point. I just really enjoy for any of my commanders to be... Um, let's go ahead and bump, beat the bolus out of this. Bump it down to about 5. I think that'll be... Let's go to... Actually, let's go to about 8, I think. Yeah, that'd be good. You don't want it too small. If you get the brush too small, then you're just kind of like... Uh, <laughs> just making it hard on yourself. Don't make it hard on yourself. Make it a little bit bigger. But just because the brush region is not going to be the entire thing right there. You know, we can just and then come in and you can come in there, just kinda tap it, tap it like that. Just click the mouse and it'll give it it won't go full blast right there. And it still gives it that nice little coned um kind of definition right there. So we're gonna go in there and just kinda tap it. I'm gonna clean this up right here. Just wanna kinda make it a little bit smooth. I think that looks good. Let's go down to the second little arm bar. Oh yeah. This will be a good one. Coming across, once again, you're just going to follow along that blue edge right there, hit the bottom, work up around that tan part right there, 
and then come back in for this part. And I'm just going to kind of just boop the corner. Boop the corner like that. Oh, yeah. Looks good. And another thing you can do is you can uh, deal with the opacity. You can set how um, clear it is and how not. So, like, just for example, we'll do it to about 50. And then we'll come in here and you can see, well, you can see the difference between this background and that one. If you really want it to go down a little bit lower, you can go like this, where you're just barely kind of dodging it out. So, hit Control Z, Control Z. Um, let's say you're doing an image that has a lot of smoke in it. So, using the, um, do we need to clean? No, uh, that looks, let's see if we can't get a little bit. Uh, and actually, this would be a good option to use AI. So we can get in here and just kind of just buff that out just a little bit. Just take away from that uh, that darkness. That's what kind of actually this controls this. It's going to be a little bit more concentrated on that one. Kind of want it to be more of a focal point. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, and then once you keep applying over the same area, it'll keep kind of deadening that area to you. So even if you have the opacity set down, it'll still kind of deaden that area. I think that looks good right there. Let's go and bump the opacity back up. Let's come in here and let's clean up this little ridge right here. Give that nice little... Oh, there we go. Just kind of dip in there. That looks good. I like that. So we're okay. And then the one thing you want to do is just kind of use your mouse pointer, follow the edge. We're okay on the outside. Anything else we need to clean up? Nope. Oh, we do need to get in here and clean up these little antenna. That'll really make the image kind of pop. Once again, just kind of click on those little, just kind of just click the mouse on those corners. Just kind of that way you're not running it in there. And, uh, oh yeah. That's one of the, the best parts about doing these card edits is doing little areas like this because it ends up look it looks so good. And that's one of the main things why um, I like doing this stuff is because it makes you have good looking thumbnails, you know. I like putting out a good product that's uh, like a good commander product that's fun to watch and I like for it to look good. I, I want people to see my thumbnails and be like, hey. That looks pretty good. I'll give it a watch, and then they see it. And for the most part, most people enjoy my stuff, or at least I, I would assume they do. And uh, yeah, so just that little attention to detail. It matters, you know. Attention to detail always matters. So don't ever skimp on anything. You know, at the end of the day, it's your work that you're putting out, and you want to be proud of it, and just make sure it looks good. Put out a good product, and make sure it looks good. That, that's exactly what you need. That's all you need to know to do a YouTube channel for anything that you exactly want to do. If you just have passion and um, you put out a good product, and you uh, just make sure your stuff looks good. Like, mainly it's just giving that sense of that, hey, I care about this. Like, look how much time did, uh, we took to do this thumbnail. You know, I don't know how long we're recording right now, but, uh, you know, anybody could just plast that image up there and then just say, hey, here's the scare of God. Have some fun. But uh, we're going to make it look good, make it look special, man. just want to make it, uh, just give that, that little attention to detail. That matters. Okay. And then we'll come back in for that little area right there kind of buff it up just a little bit. Ooh, yeah. A little curve area. And I think we can actually start down and watch it. Oh, yeah. There we go. It's fun. That, you know, we do quick, uh, we do some, uh, like very slow brushes, uh, brush strokes sometimes, but it's nice to kind of, just kind of risk it or whatever, just put it in the corner, just drag it down real quick. And then we've got that cleaned up. Anything else? You can see, yeah, it looks good. looks clean and crisp. That's the main thing. You know, you just need to have those crisp lines. So let's go and put this back on. Make sure we don't miss anything. And uh, all we really need to do is kind of clean up this area right here, which won't take that long. And then we'll get over to the thumbnail part. And then, oh, yeah, break free. <laughs> break free tool. And we'll just go and give it a nice little point right there. There we go. And that's another thing. If you're going to be doing card art editing, you know, just give the defined area of something. Like, obviously, this comes to a point. So just kind of shave off a nice little clean point. It'll look good. And we've kind of cleaned up that area. Let's go over here, just get this little, and see, little stuff like that matters. You know, you want to have that clean, defined edge going into this right here. Excuse me, anything else? I think we might be able to kind of, I don't know if we, actually, control Z. Let's go down to about size 4. Yeah, that would be perfect. Because if we don't want to take away from that curved line that we've worked really hard to get. And then we can come up here, go around this little bevel or whatever that is, and just kind of clean that up. We can get in there, kind of give it a little bit more defined area. Actually, we can work that a little bit more. There we go. And then we'll just kind of just keep tapping this little area. Just keep tapping your mouse button until it kind of cleans up. Looks good. You could probably tap right there just a little bit. Kind of take away some of that darkness. Okay. That looks good. Kind of back out. Let's do a quick little change. You know, part of this right here doesn't it doesn't look as uniform but hey you know we're doing a hand brush edit and then the the hands look good the arms look good the antenna looks good and then i think the only thing we oh we need to do this little area down here 
And I see where we kind of accidentally bumped into that corner just a little bit. So we're just going to come down here, just shave down a little bit more. That way we still give that definition. And once again, kind of shave down right here. There we go. You just want it to come to a point. And then we're going to kind of just clean that up just a little bit. It looks a little bumpy. I don't, I don't like that. And you just want to do small little brush strokes. Just come along the edge to where it comes down to that little focal point. Oh, yeah, it looks good. Um, and then I think we can touch up the hand just a little bit. Okay. So we've got that cleaned up. Uh, let's go in here, just kind of give it a little bit more de definition right there. And then I think we're good, man. We need to clean this little corner right here. And just kind of boop on that little corner. <sighs> we are good. This is awesome, beautiful. Let's go and take away the... Um, we're going to go ahead and save this real quick. Let's go to Joel Gimp Files. And then we're going to go save it as the Scarab God. There we go. Now we're going to save it and it's clear. I'm just going to take away the blue background and we'll save it like that then whenever we open it. So now we're going to go over to the thumbnail. So we have my base thumbnail right here. It's just, if, you're, if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you may have noticed that the blue background I used to use. Uh, but yeah, so this is the base file. And then what, one thing I do like to do as far as filling in the background instead of doing blue background is finding some sort of either basic land art or some other art. And I found this beautiful art right here. It looks good. I feel like it you know, fits on theme with the crypt. So we're going to hit Control A. Control A is going to select everything. Then we're going to hit Control C, which is going to copy it. Then we're going to click on this image and we're going to hit Control, have the background image highlighted. Hit Control V. It's going to pop onto the background right there. And then see it's floating right now, so it's just basically just a floating image. And if we, we need to make it a new layer, because if we don't, it's simply just going to anchor down onto that image. We don't want it on the background image, because we, need to, we want to be able to move it. So we're going to hit Control-Z, so it's still that floating layer right here. We're going to right-click on it, and we're going to go to to new layer. And so now it's covering up the jolt thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to slowly drag it down in between that. And there we go. Pops up right there. But you may notice there's a little bit of a line right here. So we're going to make this a little bit bigger. So we're going to go over here to the resize tool right here. And make sure you have the uh, paste layer selected. We're going to hold the control key because that's going to allow you to scale it how you want it. You know, if you do like, if you don't hold the control key, you're looking kind of like it's a little, it gets a little wavy, and sometimes the image looks kind of funny. So um, you always click on that, hold the control key, and we're just gonna make it just a little bit bigger so we can make sure we fill up this entire image. So it's gonna scale it out, and we'll go and bring it down right there. I think that'll be good because we can leave the the scarab god that'll kind of highlight off the scarab god. Uh, let's go back to the scarab god. We're gonna hit Control A to highlight everything. Control C. And then we're going to go over here to the image, hit Control V. We're going to highlight this, make sure we're highlighted on this layer right here. If we're highlighted on the Jolt logo, why don't we hit Control V? It's going to paste inside the logo, which we don't want it. <laughs> Not going to be good. So we're going to highlight this one right here, Control V. Hey, there's the Scarab God. And once again, right click, go to New Layer. And then we're going to size it just a little bit using that size until hold the Control key. Just kind of drag it down just a little bit. And we can rework it later, but it looks kind of good. I like that. Actually, let's make it a little bit bigger. Scale it down just a little bit, and any time I undo something, I'm strictly, I'm just simply hitting the Control Z button to undo it. So, we're gonna bring the Scarab God over here, and that actually looks pretty good. I think like that, you know, we don't really want the focal point to be the weapons that he's holding, but I think that looks pretty solid. We might bring it down just a little bit, just get a little bit more of that weapon in there. Here we go. And then we do want to adjust the, the colors on it. Maybe we kind of play around with the colors for a little bit. Let's go to the saturation on here, actually. And see, I'm I'm all self-taught as far as... There we go. Brightness and contrast. Let's see if we can't get a little bit more contrast out of it. Kind of, you know, I just... I, I'm, I'm, this is all self-taught, so I just kind of do it until it pops a little bit. And I like that. I think that's good enough. So that's going to be good. Click on that. So that looks pretty good so far. And let's go ahead and bring the uh, text cool, uh, not text cool, the text tool right here. We're going to highlight and kind of make it a little bit bigger. I already have the font selected, something strange, pretty cool little font. So we're going to type in the RYPIP, the crypt of the, and we're going to kind of just, I'll show you how we're going to do this. Let's go and make this about 95. That should be, oh yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Maybe make it just a little bit bigger. About 100. Yeah, that looks good. So you can see you got the nice little uh, bloody font right there. That's one of my favorite things about doing, um, about doing thumbnails is I get to look for like, you know, there's a lot of cool magic cards and stuff like that. So I get to uh, pick out some pretty gnarly looking fonts, which is always a lot of fun. Let me make this just a little bit bigger. Let's go about 105. Yeah, perfect. There we go. Hit it. Don't want to push it on that one. Let's go and bring this toolbox up a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and make another toolbox. And it's going to be the Crypt of the Scarab God. S-C-A-R-A-M. God. 
And let's go ahead and make this one probably about 140. Oh, beautiful. Looks good. So we're going to make this out just a little bit. Probably go about, let's see if we can do 150. Yeah, that looks good. And we're going to drag this over here. And let's go ahead and bump the jolt up a little bit. Jump the EDH up just a little bit. Okay, it looks good. And then with layering, we have the, the top layer as the Scarab God. So if we bring it over here, you can see it takes over the image. If we drag this layer down to the bottom, he goes behind it. So that's another way you can kind of give that illusion of depth to it. Um, that's certain, you can do it in certain ways right here. So you can see where the tool... If you ever drag the background, just hit Control-Z. You can see where we bring the tool over the EDH spot right there. It kind of gives it that little depth, that perception of depth, which kind of looks kind of cool. I always enjoy stuff like that. I think that's a good position for him. Kind of got the, the the blue fountain kind of hanging off him. Looks good. Okay, let's go and actually let's go and make the jolt just a little bit smaller. Don't want that to be the focal point. Scale that back. There we go. All right, that's perfect size. Let's go and get the EDH smaller too. We're gonna scale that down with it too. Let's go and drag it over here. I just kind of want to split the difference between the jolt. Okay, looks good. All right, so we're going to bring the, the crypt over here. And let's go and just kind of, um, we're going to rotate it just a little bit. Not the EDH. And make sure we got the crypt. There we go. Let's go and rotate it just a little bit using the rotation tool. That way it kind of looks like graffiti or something like that. I like that. And let's see if we can't parallel that jolt thing right now. So we're just going to bring it down just a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. Bring it over here. And then... Go and bring up the Scarab God. Oh, that looks good. I like it. And I'll show you how to do a drop shadow in just a second. So let's go and finish it out, though. Let's go and make another... Um, i got to do a little versus part, VS. And then I'll choose the... Uh, do we want to leave it as versus like that? I think I like that. It looks good. I normally do a little block text, but I think that looks good. Yeah, that looks good. We'll leave it like that. It looks like it's on the rock. That's a good little spot for that. And let's go ahead and make another text box on the bottom. Now, I always use Facile Sands on the bottom, so... And this is my favorite part of doing uh, card art. I'll make it a little bit bigger. But there's always a placeholder that I use for this. It's called Grand Arbiter ARB Fart Monster. <laughs> and the reason for that is um, we make it big enough to where it takes up both of the lines like that. There we go. And we'll go ahead and make it centered right here on the Justify. But um, I'm going to do the Facile Sands on this one. So you can go over here. That's a good sans serif font. I always like that one. There we go. Facile sans. Okay. Let's go and just pop it out just a little bit. There we go. Let's go and pop this down. But yeah, I always use Grand Arbiter Fart Monster as um, as a placeholder because you can see where there's certain commanders where it's just like Norin. Norin the Wary. That's going to be one line. So Grand Arbiter Fart Monster is a really good way for me to be a placeholder and uh, <laughs> kind of get two lines across. But it's something I've been doing forever and I just, I don't know, it just always makes me laugh. I love this truly my favorite thing is typing Grand Arbiter Fart Monster. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and save this as a, uh, save it as a nice little, uh, where are we? Did I make, yep, yeah, Crypt of the Scarab God. We're going to go save this thumbnail as the base file, so Scarab God, uh, thumbnail, base, there we go. Go ahead and save it. That way we can do whatever changes we need to. And then let's go ahead and we're going to do, we're going to make this, um, the Crypt and the Scarab God pop just a little bit. So make sure that the Crypt is highlighted. We're going to go over to Filters. We're going to go to Light and Shadow. We're going to go over to Drop Shadow. Click on that. We have Offset 6.6. Six. This is how I've set it up. Sometimes the blur radius will be up a little bit. Knock the blur radius all the way down because we want a crisp background to it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give that nice little shadow behind it. So you can see the font right now. We're going to click OK. And that puts just a little bit of black behind there, and it makes it stick out. It makes a huge difference on your stuff. I used to not do this, and I started doing it, and it makes a world of difference. So drop shadow, once again, boom, there we go. It just gives it that nice little defined look to it, and that really looks good. Drop shadow again. All right. And then as far as the Grand Arbiter Fart Monster, we're going to go and save it like this. Uh, that way we can, because um, I'm always going to change it up and we don't have to do anything else. But yeah, there we go. So we took the image from the uh, the Scorpion God, not the Scorpion God, uh, the Scarab God, all the way down to a nice little thumbnail. Guys, I hope you enjoyed. I like doing videos like this. It's a lot of fun. It's a good way for me to kind of hang out and chat with you and kind of hang out. So, but yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.